Hello and welcome. Well, last week I did a video on fine-tuning this 4x6 bandsaw, and uh, I thought it was going to be the only video, but I think I'm going to further improve on this thing. Uh, let me show you what I'm talking about. Just briefly, if you missed the other video, uh, I encourage you to go back and watch it. But basically, uh, what was covered in the other video is the ideal place to run these blade guides. And that is, the ideal placement for these blade guides is with the blade perfectly straight between the two wheels and then just twisted in the vertical position. Anyway, on this saw, uh, and it may be different on different uh, manufacturing dates or it may be a quality control issue, but on this saw, the head didn't go down far enough to cut through the stock if these were adjusted in the appropriate position. So I did a couple of things, and it was covered in the other video, to lower this head. But uh, it's really not the ideal situation. So I'm going to address that right now. What I'm going to do, I'm going to make a quarter inch thick steel plate to put on top of this. Several of the viewers suggested this, and I had thought of this, but I didn't really want to go to the trouble of doing it. It's, it's a fair amount of work. It requires a mill to cut this slot. And, uh, well, a lot of people don't have mills. A lot of people have this saw, but don't have a mill. I think what I'll do is make a template. When I make this plate, I'll, I'll make a digital template. And, uh, any of the viewers that want to make that plate or need to. Some of the saws may not need this plate. Uh, but if you want to make the plate, I'll make the template available and maybe you can have one made. Right there, I just described the exact arc of that. That's a rough, that's a casting right there, it's unfinished. So when I set this up on the mill, I'll be able to dial this in. Looks like uh, four and three eighths. I was kind of curious how much corrosion was under that vise when using the uh, uh, water-based coolant. Looks pretty good, really. I cut a really crude taper there on, on a plug. I'm going to cut that off right there. That'll serve as a center for my radius.
Okay, I'm getting ready to cut the slot, the long slot, and I got a milling fixture I made a while back. It's pretty useful for some things. I could have swapped the jaws on my vise and clamped this pretty good. Uh, what this is really useful is squaring the end of stock. You can put it against this side edge here and mill the end of it. But I measured to the edge here and here. I usually run it the other way around. Clamp the other way around, but it's easier to see what you're doing here. So I'm going to mill that slot, and then I'm going to I'm going to mill it all the way through with half inch, and then I'm going to check it against the bandsaw to make sure that I'm lined up. I'll probably mill it a little bit oversized. The slot in the saw is three quarter inch. It might be a metric equivalent, but it's real close to three quarter. So I'm going to just clear, uh, mill this all the way through. And then go go wider because I'm not sure on the alignment. Yeah, everything looks like it's lining up good. Looks like I just need to take just a tiny bit off of this side. About that much off of this side. This gap can be wider than this gap. This is being supported in here by the casting. So I'll have to put a spacer in there. Well, looks like a pretty good fit. Now I have to mill off that right there and that right there. Okay, I got this bolt in here as a position to hold the position. If you ever do something like this, don't, lo don't do like what I did. Transferring holes from a countersunk hole, the transfer punch doesn't work very good. The tip on the end of it elevates it to where it doesn't locate. As long as I keep the punch perfectly vertical. Yeah, hopefully that'll work. Locating countersink holes can be kind of tricky. Tell you what, I'll be able to see if I'm off by doing like this. Looks like I'm pretty close. Oh yeah, it'll work right there. I 
I got a feeling I'm gonna have to have a spacer right here to make it cut through better. We'll see. Oh, look at that. I like it. I think I can put a spacer right here, use that screw hole there for a hold down, and then drill another hole on the side right here. It's always annoying when you go to adjust that stop, it's full of, uh, full of uh, metal shavings. But if I put a, a hole right there, I can use a hex head and just, it'll be easier to clamp. May have to put another screw in there. I like it. Well, it actually looks original. Well, that about wraps up part two of three. Yeah, I got one more little trick I'm going to show you. Uh, it, it's a simple, simple upgrade, but it, it really makes the saw more convenient to use. Anyway, uh, this plate, I guess call it an elevating plate. Uh, I'll draw it up and put a link down below the video if you want to make your own. Uh, I don't know how many saws really need it. I don't know if they're all made this way or not. But you'll be, you'll be able to download it and, and print it out full size and hold it up to your saw to see if it'll fit. And uh, if you don't have a mill, maybe you can get somebody to make one. Uh, I've also thought about uh, having some made and making them available. Uh, maybe get them water jet water jet cut. I'm just not sure I can do that and offer them for a good price. I'm hoping maybe I can do that. Uh, I mean, it'll help out a lot of people, uh, or possibly. Anyway, thanks for joining me, and be sure and subscribe.